All right. Sounds good. Okay. All right. So welcome everybody. Uh, I am Damon John, the shark Damon John, and I am privileged and proud and honored to sit here and be part of the Big Money Energy Release Day event with my buddy Ryan. Um, you know, obviously him from uh, Million Dollar Listing New York, as well as his first book, Sell It Like Sirhan. And this is his second book, um, Big Money Energy. We're going to be having a good time tonight. We're going to, uh, I'm going to be asking him some questions about the book and why did he create it. As well as after that, we're going to be taking some Q&A from everybody. So make sure you put uh, your questions into the comments on the side. And we are going to bring on Ryan right now. We'll bring him on, Mike. All right. We made it. Here you go. Here. What's up, Ryan? Oh, okay. Great. Yes. Yes, yes. Those are my imaginary friends yelling yeah, at the front here. And we got a lot of people over there. I'm thinking more like a super spreader event's happening over there. Everything okay? That is, I am there all wearing masks that are branded with your name, just so you know. Oh, I, I definitely appreciate it. Thanks well, for being here, man. Thank you for doing this. Sorry you're getting a little bit of uh, feedback. This is uh, this is so wild. I remember, uh, and you know this too, you know, when we put books out in the past, my first book, get to be in person with people and do these events yeah. and kind of go eye to eye. And uh, now I get to do this and just look at your beautiful face. And that's pretty awesome. Oh, well, I don't know about that, but I definitely appreciate it. Um, and I'm listen, I'm really excited about the book. You know, I know about all the concepts of it, of, of having big money energy and, um, that's true. You know, I don't care whether it's a Shark Tank or other times I'm investing in companies. You know, when the person doesn't have big money energy, I just doubt if there's anything going to be there. So you got to walk in the room with that because you got little time to make an impression on people. And I'm, I'm, I'm loving the fact that you laid it down in, in actionable steps that people can take. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, uh, and you, you were so awesome to do our our podcast together, and um, and you told the story about you know the pencils before. Like you, you've had big money energy since you were since you were a, a little guy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always wanted to walk in the room and feel like I can add value to others and attract people to uh, what you know who I was and make people ask me, "Wait a minute, the oh, it's gone now." All right, uh, we figured it out. All right, this is going now. I can actually really, uh, you know, hear you without any um, disruption. But oh, yeah, right. I used to walk. In the, I used to walk in the room, man, and really hope that I brought such a such an energy into the room that people came over to me. And we've all been in those rooms where you see people, you go, "I wonder what that person does." You feel like that person is important, and everybody's important, but you feel like that person's extra extra important when you see them. They feel like a star. They don't even have to have these great threads on or jewelry or anything like they just feel like a star yeah. and that's what i want people to take away from your book because i'm sure uh that um i'm going to take away a lot of those points from the book i've already been using actually one of the points i'm not i'm going to tell it to you when you get to it uh, okay. but you want i'm going to ask you a question so 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 and i wrote them down myself before, before we because, start just real quick oh, as yeah. it comes in um uh i just want to let everybody know because i have put notice out today uh, one thing that I want to do, because there's a lot of people here who, listen, they, they know you from Shark Tank and, uh, and all of your books and all of your businesses. And uh, people know me from Million Dollar Listing New York. And one thing I wanted to do for people, uh, in part because Million Dollar Listing New York has been off the air for like two years because of, because of COVID. Um, and because we can't shoot that show in a studio, we shoot it you know, on the streets in New York. And it was really, really tough to shoot this past, uh, this past year. Uh, I want to give one person who's here the opportunity to come to New York City when things are safe. Um, uh, I want to fly you here and I want you to come and film something with Million Dollar Listing for me. Um, uh, wow. And you're going to do it together. And so, yeah. And so the way I want to do it, because, uh, you know, we've got a little over 300 people in here now. We're going to have more and more people join as time goes on. Uh, in this section here on your screen, if you see where it says, say something nice, okay. Uh, uh, if you want to kind of enter this, I don't want to call it a raffle, but we're going to pick someone at random. Um, I want you to write in there as we're talking, as, as Damon and I are going through this, what big money energy means to you, uh, and where you're from. Just let us know. Cause I think it's kind of cool for us to see where everyone is from here. So we're kind of all over the world right now. So where you're from and what Thanks is best money energy to you? you? Yeah. So if you put in there where you says, say something nice, what big money energy means to you and where you are from, that is an absolute amazing opportunity, first of all, to 
go to our beautiful city of New York, uh, you know, when everything's right. Um, I think that it's going to be an amazing time to go there as well as be highlighted on an amazing show next to an amazing person. You never know. This could be your big break. You could, you could, uh, you know, knock I could sell you a $10 million dollar house and you, you don't even need to have the money. Right. It's that is great. true. That is true. That is true. So what a great opportunity you're already giving. Now, Ryan, there's a book uh, taped to your hand. Um, what, what is yeah. that all about? Just because of today or that has been there for a while? Ay, ay, ay. Actually, let me bring him in here. It's like Puma, come here. He's standing right here. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> this is Jason Puma. Jason Puma, say hi. So Jason Puma uh, uh, is in our studios team here at the company. Um, and, you know, we were trying to think of ways, you know, a big part of big money energy for me is not negotiating your goals and is uh, and is determining what your commitments are. Right. There's a big part of the book where I go through how uh, professionals, right, uh, stick to their commitments uh, based on the decisions that they make and amateurs stick to their commitments based on their feelings. Um, uh, and one of the things that I wanted to show people was, listen, I want this book to sell, right? I'm a salesperson. You've seen me on Million Dollar Listing year after year after year. I want the book to sell well. I want it to do well. I can't go out there and meet everybody. There's no book events. With Sell Like Sirhan, I traveled the country like four times, ran over. It was awesome. This, this I can't. I'm just, you know, we're in New York on a screen. And so uh, uh, Puma over here said, here's what you're going to do. Uh, you're the kind of person that makes decisions and then you stick to them. And that's a big part of what this book is about. And that's a big part of what we're showing to the world. So really let's prove it. Let's prove it. Let's make things uncomfortable. Tape the book to your hand for a month. If you can do that. People are going to watch that and they'll buy the book because they're going to know that if a guy can actually go through that and sleep with the book, yeah. shower with the book, work out with it taped to his hand, uh, then maybe there's something in this that we can all learn from. And that's why it's here. I want it to be a bestseller and I'm not taking it off until that happens. Although it is getting a little bit worn. I switch hands though, so don't freak out. That, that, that is dedication, but I love that. I love that. I mean, you know, listen, a lot of people don't realize, especially when, you know, you're a public personality, that books really generally don't make a lot of money. It's not why we do it is because of money, but you feel like you can create true change in people's lives. It is a very tedious process to have a book, write it, go through it and travel the country. But it also, you get to see all the people that, you know, respect and value what you're doing. And if you change just one person's life from that book, you know, and 10 years later, they tell you who they are and where it inspired you. It is one of the greatest feelings you will ever get uh, and have in your entire life. And it makes it feel like it's all worth it. So thank you for putting all the knowledge down in this book. And I know you somewhat described it, but describe really um, what exactly is big money energy? Yeah, good question. Good place to start. You know, I, I, I was quarantined last year with everybody else. Right. We were I was in New Hampshire with my family. I got a baby. Um, uh, my mother in law lives with us. She's over 60. And we were in the woods completely by ourselves. And I was talking to a lot of people and times were really, really tough. Uh, people were being fired. People were losing their jobs. They were being furloughed. And there was a lot of fear out there, justifiably. Right. We were all afraid. The stock market sold off 10,000 points. We had no idea what was going to happen. And I was talking to so many people and I, I realized that uh, there's this problem where, where people connect their self-worth to their income. If they don't make a certain amount of money, ah, they're, not, they're not good enough, right? They're not worth it. They don't deserve this. They don't deserve that. And I think so many of us feel like success, okay? The success you have, right? The success people we see on TV have, the success that person in the room who just walks in and oozes confidence has is reserved for people who are, uh, born rich, who are good looking, who are well educated, who are super connected, right? And it's not for us. Yeah. And I, I was that type of person when I first moved to New York City. I, I looked at people that were successful and I said, you know what? That, that's just not going to be me. Uh, and you become riddled with self doubt and you let that self consciousness be the perception that you put out of yourself into the world. Uh, and it doesn't have to be the case. Right. I, I am living, walking proof that you can be the person you want to be and you don't have to wait for it. You can be that person today. You can be the future you right now. You just have to make the determination to be that person. And big money energy is that set of qualities that every successful person embodies that we all aspire to have. And 
I know that it's really, 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 really hard to change our circumstances. I can't change how much money is in my wallet right now, right? It's, it, it is what it is. I can't change what parents are. I can't change my height. I can't change my weight, right? I can, but I can't change it today. But what I can change right now is my energy. And if you learn how to change and control your energy and the energy you exude every single day, you can change your life. Um, and I was sitting there in quarantine and, uh, and just this poured out of me, uh, and I was not expecting it to, I was, I was, I was planning on spending quarantine, building a business, which I did. Um, uh, but then I let everybody else build it while I was busy writing this book. Um, uh, so thank them very much. A lot of them are standing around me saying, thank God. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, and that's what, listen, that's what big money energy is. It is, it is my blueprint, uh, for building confidence so that you can achieve whatever your own personal definition is for massive success, because we all have it inside of us, right? When you were selling pencils, you knew it even just a little bit. And I think everybody here wants that little bit extra and you don't have to go to business school for it, right? You, it starts within the core. You just have to unlock it. And that's what I go through in the book. And you know, what I like about that and the thought process is a lot of people do not believe that they deserve or they uh, were set out for success. However, in the event that you do acquire success, again, whatever you mean, you, you deem it to be. And if you don't have that self-confidence, you will lose the success because you will not be able to maintain it. You will feel like you hit the lotto or, you know, like you're a one trick pony and things of that nature so this is incredibly needed because it doesn't mean if you have nothing even if you do get something if you don't have these things in play then you don't feel like you're worthy we all know people who say i'm never going to find a good man i'm always yeah. going to be in an yeah. abusive relationship this what are you kidding me nobody in my family has ever accomplished anything why would i and that is the opposite of the big energy. So that's what energy is. And and, wh and and that's why, you know, energy matters. Now, the next one is, uh, you know, how do you begin the process of challenging uh, or channeling, excuse me, how do you begin the process of channeling um, big money energy? Uh, well, it's a whole process that I put into the book that people started getting today. Uh, but listen, it does not happen overnight. And I know that a lot of people right now are struggling. I know that a lot of people are doing incredibly well. And I know that a, most people are struggling, that are having a really, really, really hard time. Uh, and the process to begin channeling that big money energy, okay, starts with one determining that you are ready to take back control. Okay? And there's a few things that you can start doing. The first thing that I need everybody to understand is that you cannot let your past infect your present. Okay. The person that I live for every single day is not myself today. It's not my, my baby who's at home in bed, I think, by now. It's not my wife. It's not even the people in this room. It's, it's myself tomorrow. More specifically, it's myself in 2030. I live for myself 10 years ahead of now because I know that everything that I do today, the foundation that I'm building for myself today, whatever pain, struggle I'm going through today means nothing to the type of life I'm trying to build for the guy that I'm going to be in 10 years, which is going to go by like that. You know, time goes by so fast. So first you have to make the determination to not let your past infect your present, whatever baggage you have, whatever happened before, you know, so many of us are born happy. We're born confident. We're born excited, right? We're little kids. We're excited. And somewhere along the line, we lose our control. And maybe that's because of a girlfriend or a boyfriend, right? Who said something mean or made us feel really, really bad about ourselves. Maybe it was our parents who said we weren't good enough. Maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it was a boss, right? Who fired us, who made us feel like total shit or a teacher, okay? You cannot let that moment infect the rest of your life. So you need to make that determination to not let your past infect your future. And something we go into the book a lot is, is figuring out how to control your work PTSD, because a lot of us too are working, right? We're independent contractors, we're W-2 employees, we're trying to work, we're trying to make a living. A big part of the book is, is how to make money and how to make more money than you ever thought possible. And that comes down to controlling that work PTSD because we're haunted by things. So do not let your past infect your present is one. Step two is, and this people are gonna think is a little bit cheating, but it's not. 
you want to get yourself a security blanket to start. Okay. Just like my baby, like Zena, like your four year old might have a blankie that she sleeps with. Okay. It yeah. is okay to have what I like to call a security blanket. Right. When I first got into the city, I was nervous that I didn't look the part. I didn't have the appearance. I didn't have a good suit. I, I was going into these meetings with people who are super successful. And I just knew that they were going to look at me and judge me immediately. And, and they, they could, right? Because your first impression is your last impression if you are not careful. And so I went down to Canal Street. This is a true story. And I'm embarrassed. I, I, I used to be embarrassed to talk about it. But now I, I just own it. And I bought myself a fake Rolex. Um, it turned my wrist green for a significant period of time but it made me feel good. And, and that's okay. Right. I knew when I put on that fake watch, uh, that was beautifully yellow and plastic that I could walk down the street and I would feel like I was wearing a $30,000 watch. Even though if I had $30,000 in my pocket, I, I probably would die because that was more money that I'd ever seen in my entire life. And, but what it acted as is a vision board on my wrist. Okay. I made the determination going forward that one, Whatever happened in my past was not going to infect my future. I'm moving forward towards future me. Two, I had a little bit of a security blanket that reminded me every single day, hey, it's okay to want things. It's okay to want stuff. And this is reminding me every day on my wrist that I am going to one day get to a point where I could buy a nice watch and I'm not going to sweat it because it's going to be totally possible. And three, you really, really, really want to schedule growth work. Right. I still feel sick when I see growth work on my calendar and I'm not really good at socializing. And I know a lot of us right now, given everything that's going on, uh, have a hard time doing that because we, we can't go and meet other people. Right. But I, I would used to force myself to attend events because there are billions and billions and billions of people on the planet and we don't know any of them. And every single time I would go into a situation with other people and I get nervous and I would look at the ground or I would look at my phone and I wouldn't want to talk in public and I would leave, it would be a waste of time. But every time I would go to an event and I would actually open up and I would talk to somebody and I'd make it a game to go around and say, hey, I'm going to go and find three people, find something in common with them, and then I'm going to leave and go home where I'm more comfortable. My life would change in just a little bit. And I'd realize, hey, talking to people I don't know isn't that bad. And you get better and better and better at it. Those are a few of the uh, many, many, many ways in the book where you can start to channel the big money energy that you have inside you. Well, I like the fact that they are actual steps that you can take. And I, I, I truly do believe that, you know, you do need to have some kind of security blanket, whether it's something that you are wishing, um, you know, for the future or something that's going to remind you of where you're going to be one day. Um, you know, also, yeah, you have to get up and do what you can for yourself. Who are you going to be in 10 years? Because if you are not happy with who you are, then how can you be really great for other people? And, and networking is key. Getting out and speaking, you know, getting out and talking. You know, people think you're only going to pitch when you're on Shark Tank. No, you're not. You're pitching when you're trying to get into the bathroom before your husband or wife in the morning. You're pitching when you're telling your child, please get on virtual school today and, and maybe I'll get you some ice cream, you know, later on. Um, yeah. And when you get into a room and you realize how to pitch, then you realize what we call networking. And networking is one of the most powerful ways that you can become successful. Because I'll tell you, listen, if, if you wanted me to recommend you to somebody that uh, argument's sake was a plumber. Uh, I'm not going to recommend my cousin because my cousin burnt the turkey at Thanksgiving and took a girlfriend from me when I was 18 years old and still haven't paid me my $10 back. But if I meet somebody in a bar or in a networking event or even at the store who realizes they're a great, said they're a plumber, yeah. I'll pass the card on to you and say, listen, I don't really know this person that well. The person really seemed like a good person. You know what? Check them out. Right. I've already given you the disclaimer why, uh, you know, I don't know this person, so don't hold me hostage to it. But I also am recommending somebody that you know, they do a great job. Then you know what? You remember that I hooked you up. If they do a bad job. You'd be like, hey, Damon, that person wasn't worth anything, but you don't hold it against me. So I think all three of those points are absolutely valid points. Now, um, what was the most valuable asset as you developed your big money energy? Is Was it the the Rolex or the mind frame? What was the asset that you that you really, um, you know, you developed with that to be honest uh it, it was not anything material right 
Um, uh, it was something that took me a really long time to figure out, uh, which is why I'm, I'm happy people are here today and listening to this because I, I, I hope this is a good takeaway for a lot of people. Uh, the biggest asset that, that I was able to develop was my time. Uh, and that sounds super cliche until it's not. Okay. So let me explain. We all have the same 24 hours in our day. Okay? Now you might say, no, you don't, Ryan. You don't have to sit in the carpool line. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. I've got less hours than you do. And I understand that. We all have different lives. But the sun comes up for me the same way it comes up for everybody else. We have those same hours in the day. And when I was starting out, I wanted to get more done than anyone else. And I wondered if I was actually using my time wisely. And I, and I wasn't. I was wasting a significant amount of time. So I did a time audit, kind of the same way you would do uh, like a diet, right? A diet book where you'd write down and say, well, I, I feel like I should be losing weight, but I'm not. So you write down everything you eat for a week. And then you look back and say, ah, I get it. It's the Fresca, right? Or whatever it might be. Uh, I did that for my time. And it was super annoying, but it changed my life. I wrote down what I did every minute. If it was reading the news on my phone, if it was walking to go get a sandwich, whatever it might be, I wrote it all down. I did a complete time audit. And do you have any idea how much time I was wasting watching TV? Like, I had no idea. I didn't think I was a big TV watcher. I just thought, ah, I go to work, I watch a little TV at night. Turns out I was watching hours and hours. And maybe it was in the background, maybe it wasn't. I was doing so many things that I didn't think were a waste of time, but because they were kind of spread out throughout my day, it was a terrible, terrible, terrible use of my minutes. So once I've done that audit, uh, and I, I suggest everybody else can do this too. You can even do it for one day, do it for two, do it for a whole five days if you can. <clears throat> you will realize that your time is your greatest, greatest asset. And then you're gonna try to figure out ways to fix it. So. One thing that you might find yourself, okay, in that time audit is you might find that you're a sucker for something called the perfection trap. Uh, there are people who work for me that'll spend an hour to write a three minute email. Okay. There are people who overthink and overanalyze to do something that doesn't need to be perfect. Right? The goal is to get as much done as you possibly can with the minutes that were given. And there's a whole section of the book where I go into my thousand minute rule. Um, uh, I've actually vlogged about it a little bit as well. Um, but we're basically all left with a thousand minutes a day after sleep, after time with our families, eating, all that. We basically are the CEO of our own bank of time every single day. And we got a thousand fresh minutes every day. And what are you going to do with that time? And once you realize that that time is actually worth something, then you're not going to throw away the whole thousand minutes just because someone screwed up five of them the same way you wouldn't throw away $995 if someone spit on five of those, right? Once you realize that you are that CEO of your own bank of time every day, you wake up every day energized, excited. You are your own CEO. And that was probably the biggest asset I realized I had uh, uh, once I was able to unlock what big money energy meant to me. I love I love that. I love how you realize you're watching too much TV. Giovanni on here said, you know, this is really great. He said you won't see them advertising uh, Ferrari commercials on TV because the people buying them ain't watching TV. So that's really absolutely amazing. But time is crucial. You know, listen, it's the only thing in the world that you can never get back. And yeah. technically, time is the only thing that we're all, always selling you. Right. You know, Uber is selling you so you don't have to go out and get a, a, a yellow cab or call a limousine service. Facebook is showing you that you don't have to go to grandma's house and look at all those goddamn pictures and hear about her story. You're just like or dislike the pictures on Facebook. Right. We're all selling you time, especially the people who sell you diet products. Oh, just drink this pill and or just take this pill. Excuse me. And you don't have to go to the gym. Time is crucial. And uh, you're right. Take inventory. Look at the time. I mean, listen, I and, and I'm going to tell you something. The biggest question that people always ask me is how do I manage my personal time and work time? And that all changes from the Damon who's 20 years old to the Damon who's 50 years old. The Damon at 20, I can sleep three hours a night and eat pizza all the time. The Damon at 50, I can't. So work life balance is something that you're going to address while looking at that time. You don't realize when you wake up in the morning. When I wake up in the morning, I do not look at social media for the first hour because everybody looks like Ryan. They're all skinnier and sexier and richer than me, and they're all somehow in Greece 
even in the you know in the winter and i don't look at emails either for the first hour why because you're allowing somebody to come into your bed and tap you on your neck and say here's my goddamn problem so i get up for the first hour and i take my time knowing what i want to do that day and in life and then i'll get to everybody else's problems because i'm going to have social media depression and a bunch of other problems and that is how i maximize my time and ryan you go into it so eloquently and give people step-by-step -step ways that they can take inventory and then execute accordingly. Now, it does not mean that if you do want to fuck off some time, then write it in there. Write in there that I'm going to watch a half an hour. I'm going to let the TV wash over me for a second. I'm going to go out and go drinking with some friends. It's totally okay as long as you are in control of the narrative and the narrative is not in control of you. The next question I have for you is, um, you know, how, how do you stay motivated, especially with all the challenges that entrepreneurs are facing today? And I want to make sure that I'm very, very clear. An entrepreneur can be number two and three and four and five in a company. Entrepreneurial thinking does not mean you have to only be an entrepreneur. This book is for people in every aspect of life. So, but I want to know, uh, you know, from you, Ryan, you know, how do you stay motivated, especially with all the challenges entrepreneurs are facing today or entrepreneurs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, that is a that is a great question, especially now, right? Beginning in 2021, okay. I, uh, uh, I wrote this book last year, but I also started my own real estate company. Um, and actually, before I want to, I don't want to forget before I answer this question to anyone who's kind of jumped in here in the last 10, 20 minutes, uh, uh, I am going to pick one of you uh, at the end of our time here today, close to around 830. Uh, kind of at random uh, and uh, actually not so much at random, the person who's going to give me the best answer in that little comment section where it says, say something nice, write down where you're from and what big money energy means to you. And we're going to pick the answer that we think is the best. And I'm going to fly you to New York city. Once everything opens up and it's safe and it's okay, all vaccinated and everyone's great. Uh, and you're going to come here to New York. We're going to put you up in a hotel uh, and you're going to come and you're going to film with me with on an episode of million dollar listing New York one day in the future. So uh, I see people saying you're packing now. Uh, uh, slow your roll just a little bit, just a little bit. But write in the comments what big money energy means to you. And I forgot earlier, but it's super important. Um, uh, a big part of the proceeds tonight uh, are going to go to Feeding America, which is a charity that is near and dear to our hearts. Um, uh, uh, just a, a quick, we just mentioned it because we don't talk about it enough. There are, for anyone here who's in the United States, there are 50 million people who are hungry tonight in the United States, right? Nearly 50 million people. Of those, 17 million of them are kids. Um, uh, and that's messed up. And so I think we should all do our part. I'm trying to do my part as best I possibly can to, to rid the world and the United States, because that's where we're based, of hunger. I don't think anybody should be going hungry tonight. So just know that you're all here. Yes, it's about the book. Yes, I want to sell the book. Yes, we're talking about ways that we can all make millions and you know go through everything. Um, uh, but you know, it's it's also about helping, right? Helping as much as we possibly can. So uh, your question was, yeah, how do I stay motivated? I mean, listen, that's that's one of the ways I stay motivated because I think about helping others. But uh, it can be really, really hard to stay motivated because obstacles are being tossed in our way uh, constantly. And entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs have to adapt over and over and over and over. So there's two things I think about. Uh, one is competition. A lot of people tell me all the time, don't worry about everybody else. Don't worry about what other people think. Uh, and I try that. Okay. And I, I do believe that in part that's healthy, but I also know that without Adidas, there would be no Nike, right? Uh, I do know that great competition fuels greatness and that finding someone to compete with even just a little bit, even just in your head, you know, if you're working, you're selling shoes. Okay. And you know that somebody else on the floors, you know, they always sell an extra pair of shoes every day. You don't have to tell them you're competing with them, but you know in your head, okay, you are. You're competing with them. You just you want to win one day. Let that little competition fuel you just a little bit, uh, uh, and that gives me energy, right? That gives me excitement. I know every day, especially me now, everything I do is completely public. Um, uh, I am not afraid of failing. I'm slightly afraid of embarrassing myself, but I, I think I'll live. But anything I do, if it doesn't work out, everybody will know. And it's because my competition out there is rooting for my failure. That gives me complete unbridled energy. 
Um, the second thing that keeps me energized and gives me that energy is my reputation. Hey, my reputation is my brand, right? It's what I'm known for. And my brand, which is my reputation, all starts from here, right? If I don't believe who I am in my core, then the perception that I give out of myself to the world is going to be of a guy that doesn't really believe in himself. And then that's going to be the reputation that people have of me. And then that's going to be my brand. And my brand is going to be a guy that doesn't really cut through the noise. Meh. Just another guy, right? Just another real estate agent. There's 80,000 of us in, the, in New York. Uh, it is unreal. And so I want to make sure that my reputation, which is my brand, right, is something that I'm living up to. Uh, uh, and once I actually, I nearly, I, we're not gonna have time to go through it, but it's in the book. There's a whole story, uh, 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 for anyone who's gone through it already wing and Wang, when I went to China to try to get a deal done and I got kidnapped, um, because my reputation was on the line. Okay. I woke up, uh, on, on a golf course in a, in a place called Pujia, Pujia, I think. Yeah. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, it was a terrible experience, but my brand was on the line and I went through with it. So you can read the book to, to see how that wow. whole thing went. I did not know about that. Um, wow. Well, now, you um, know. now, now you're going to ask yeah. about it when we're at dinner at Cipriani's and I'm going to have to say the whole thing. I got one more question then I think we're going to open it up or we may even have some 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 great surprises coming in. Um, you know, so uh, why should people, you know, I know that's in everybody's mind. Now listen, you know, why should people read Big Money Energy as opposed to the other books uh, released throughout the pandemic? It's a great question. I think people should read as much as they possibly can. But I, I wrote Big Money Energy for anyone that is looking to do a little bit more and is looking for a way to help unlock what they know deep down inside they can actually reach. Because I was that person. I, I, I walked down the streets of New York City looking at everybody else who was better than me. And I, and I let that feeling infect me. Right? It became a disease. Uh, and it almost crushed me. I almost left New York. I would not be sitting here right now had that light bulb not gone off in my head when I realized, wait a minute, we are all on the same track. We're all on the same track. Some people got started on their race way, way earlier than me. Some people are actually faster. They have stronger legs. They're just going to be faster. But that doesn't mean I can't catch them. And it doesn't mean that I can't run a little bit faster and I can't train a little bit better. And guess what? Those people who are running faster ahead of me, they might not have the same endurance I do. Right. And I can keep running and I can keep running and I can keep running faster and faster and faster. And everything we want for ourselves, everything we know for ourselves here is absolutely possible. You just got to want it. And the one thing that I cannot teach anybody is want, but everything else is absolutely possible. If you put your mind to it and you can be the future you right now, you don't have to wait. And that's what's awesome. I think so many people are like, well, I'm going through school, you know, in three years, then I'm going to get my first job and then this and then that. And then I'm going to be that person I, I've always wanted to be. I'll see you in eight years. Dude, eight years. Are you kidding me? Do the math on that. Be the person you want to be today. There's, you know, someone in my office, uh, Adrian over here, uh, my, my lead vlogger and creative director, amongst other things that uh, uh, he does, uh, talks to me all the time about being the role before you are the role. Um, uh, and I believe in that hard and this book goes into that, right? How can you be who you want to be tomorrow before you even get there? And that's big money energy. You have to see yourself there. If you don't see yourself there, then yeah. how are you going to be there? And, and listen, um, most, uh, you know, most bosses, uh, and, uh, senior level people read an average of 50 books a year and most employees, most employers read 50 books a year and most employees read one. Um, so yeah. if you change your habits, you change your positioning in life and you change where you want to be or where you see yourself. So I think we are at the, a little bit over the eight o'clock mark. What are we doing? I Michael? think we have, we, a, we have a, we have a special guest who I think just showed oh, up. I'm getting alerts see. here and there. I told everyone we'd have a special guest. Um, uh, I don't know who it is. Let's see if he actually showed up. Bars, is he here? He is on the way. He's coming up. He he hates me for for having him come here. He's gonna he's gonna hold it against me for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Um, so he's physically gonna be there in the studio with you? No, no, he's not actually in the house. No, there's there's okay. a pandemic. 
it's a pandemic. Yeah. Okay, I, I, this isn't I, a super I, spreader I, I, event. I heard you say he's coming up. I'm not. I wasn't sure. What oh, no, he, no, is, no, uh, he is uh, connecting to the video, so he'll be with us in just a second. He's he's connecting. He is uh he is buffering. Right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's shout out to some people on here. We got Lexi on here. Nan, um, Tom, Hell, Mark is on here. Um, Savon, I believe, and you know, Colin. I uh, hope I'm saying them all right. I am just Lex. There Whoa, we go. Yes. What's happening? That's big money Mark energy. And Mr. Steve Gold. Ryan, what's happening, man? Congrats on the book. Look at those glasses. Wow. Those are, oh, there he is. There's that face. Look I do that. Name. Oh, the comment Let's section see, just got see, so brother. excited. All right, I got, I got one question because I was listening a little bit and. Uh, if there was a race between Ryan Serhan and Forrest Gump, who would win? <laughs> Forrest Gump. All I would bet on Tom Hanks all day long, dude. That guy. That guy would practice way harder than me. Um, uh, <laughs> you're a funny guy. Yeah, no, are you in your apartment? I hope someone understands why I asked that question. But is is that Soho? Are you in your new place right now? Everyone's been watching you build it. Yeah, I am in my new place finally. Um, you know how that's going. Yeah. It takes a lot of BME to uh, build a place in New York, especially during a uh, pandemic. Yes, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here. Um, I know people are really, really excited to uh, to see you. And if anyone has questions for Steve, we only have him for uh, for four minutes. That's all I can afford from him. His hourly rate is ridiculous. Uh, uh, you can leave those in the, the say something nice section there. Um, but we are, we're still filming season nine right now. Uh, how's filming going for you? It's good, man. I mean, it's a, it's, it's going to be an exciting season. That's for sure. I probably the longest, I think in terms of production time. Uh, yeah. and I think it'll be interesting for everyone to see how, how everyone kind of weathered this, this COVID storm, but, uh, you know, it's coming yeah. soon. Get ready. Yeah. Bars, are there any uh, are there any questions? Good questions that we yeah, got we in see, there. Man, we see we see what is your goal for twenty twenty one, Steve? That is being asked by Sarah. For twenty twenty one, um it's well, a good that's a good question, Sarah. Um I haven't really <laughs> thought about it, which is probably a bad answer, but it's the truth. Spend spend as much time as I can with my family. I mean, New York City is rebounding right now, which Ryan can attest to. And I, I just want to make up for some lost time and still kind of experience what I have during COVID, which is more family time. For sure. For sure. We actually did a deal together uh, this year, a good one uh, in West Chelsea that'll be on the show. That was pretty cool to do. That was good. Another question we have for you, Steve, from the chat is um, we were talking about what motivates you? What are your motivating goals? What's one of your motivating goals? That's from Blake. My motivating goals. I mean, I'm, I'm motivated by myself, to be honest. I mean, like, I think I, I've been an athlete my entire life. I've always been a competitor. I just, I don't, I don't need someone else to kind of force me to do more. I do it more myself. And I, and I don't, and I think that kind of keeps propelling me forward. And I think anyone who, who kind of pushes themselves gets farther in life. I mean, it's always good to have competition. And I think Ryan was, when I tuned in a little bit talking about how competition pushes him forward and that's great, but like I motivate, if you could self motivate, that's the best way to do it. And then also kind of, I just always say, take it also step back and enjoy what you've done. Cause you know, don't be too hard on yourself, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And awesome. One more, one final question from the chat. What what does big money uh, energy mean for me for you? Yeah, Steve Gold. What's big money energy mean to you? Besides Ryan Serhan, <laughs> oh, God. Big money energy is um, to me like owning your life, owning yourself, owning your course, whatever that path might be. And for everyone, that BME is different. Like. And and that's good. That's okay. And own it. Just own own your life. Own your own your path. That's big money. Energy. Oh, look at that! Look at the audience. Oh wow! Look at that. Woo! You have an audience there? You still wearing this book? 
<laughs> yeah, that's my life. My life. I wish I wish I wish I had Steve Gold energy. It'd be very I, I, I wish I had your BME. Sorry. Gold energy. There's there's silver. there's a lot of there's a lot of women in my office who are very excited that you're here. That is this FYI, that is true. Everyone, calm down. There's one woman. Calm down. Calm down. Unbelievable. Can we do a pan of the audience here? No, no. I'm not moving the camera whatsoever. I'm not moving the it camera. Took long, it took too long to get you looking so skinny over there. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Steve Gold, you are the man. Thank you so much for coming on and uh, uh, surprising everyone. Uh, this has been awesome. Thank you for doing this. I, I, uh, I, I owe you, and we got to do another deal here soon. All right. Let's do it, brother. Congrats. Everyone Let me know what the housewarming party is. I want to come and forget to bring a gift. I'm waiting on the table that takes apparently six months to create. What's it? Oh, classic Steve Gold. Classic <laughs> Steve Gold. All right. Enjoy. All right. Yeah. Congrats. Steve Gold, everybody. That was great. Um, that was great. So we yeah. have some other questions coming in, right? Let's do it. We've Let's got a lot it. of questions. So I, I'm just going to remind everybody who's watching. I'm the disembodied voice of... Um, of Ryan's publisher, but anybody who wants to ask a question, just drop it in the qu question section there. We're gonna bring some people up on screen to ask your yeah, question live. Says, ask a question right there, wherever it is, right over right. there. Ask a uh, so I'm gonna give everyone a second to get ready, get camera ready, but I'll go ahead and ask you, Ryan, just one of the questions from uh, Heather Atkinson. Heather, asks, Heather says, Ryan, congratulations on the book. It's amazing. In Big Money Energy, you talk about your 15-minute slots during the day to organize yourself. What is the top tips for maintaining good time management and balance? Great, great question. Uh, kind of went through that a little bit with the time audit. Um, uh, it kind of harkens back a little bit to sell it like Sirhant, uh, Heather, and I know you've gone through it. And so I know you know the, the, the finder, keeper, doer system. But you want to make sure when you're blocking out those 15-minute increments, that you are focused on doing only what you can do, okay? Uh, now, maybe right now you gotta do everything. Maybe you gotta do what he can do, she can do, and they can do as well because it's just you and that's totally okay. But as you grow, as you get more experience, as you start to make a little bit more money, the way you're really gonna compound on that is making sure that those 15 minute blocks are spent doing only what you can do. Maybe that's pitching new business. Maybe that's doing brand work. Maybe that's that's what I do, right? All day long, I promote brand all day long because I know that's going to bring in more business. So that every other fifteen minute block can be pushed off onto other people, right? So other tasks, anything anyone else can do, have other people do it. Invest in other people to help you grow, and that's how you're going to buy back your time. You're not really spending money on other people, right? You're you're buying back your time because now you're going to have someone else doing things that you are going to spend all those 15 minute blocks doing and you're going to be able to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow so focus on that forward momentum damon what do you think i agree on finding other people to, to push it off too because that exactly that's a perfect answer i never even thought of it like that um i'm going to take that i was writing down the note as you were saying that use that on shark tank i will <laughs> Um, another question we have for both of you, actually, since you're both so um, busy, how do you manage family time? Uh, Damien, you go first. Yeah, I schedule it. I uh, I schedule time. I mean, because what we end up doing is we schedule everybody else's uh, priorities first, the time to be on a Zoom or time to meet with a client, the time to, you know, be on a plane, train, an automobile when we were traveling. And we don't normally schedule. We'll say we'll get to uh, we're going to try to get home to be with our, our family uh, or whatever the case is. I schedule it. I don't care if it's a half an hour. I don't care if it's an hour. Um, you know, I'll give you a, a great example. I, I was out one day and I, I remember I was somewhere speaking. I think I was in Vegas and one of my colleagues or one of my team members kept telling me, I got to get home. I got to get home. He lives in San Diego. And I, I said, why do you got to get home? He said, listen, uh, and I remember this is what changed my, my, my thought process. He said, I promise to take my daughters out on two separate days. He has an 11 and a 12 year old daughter. Uh, and I promise to take them out every, uh, you know, every six months, I take them out on a date separately. And it's always the first of this month, or whatever. And I said, well, why? He said, because if I never take them out on a date, well, the first time they end up going out with a young man on a date, how are they gonna know how they're supposed to be treated? Um, and you know, it just, wow. it hit me like a punch in the gut because I have a 22 and a 27 year old and they, they turned out being, uh, being really amazing, amazing women. Um, cause my ex-wife really raised them, 
uh, accordingly. But I miss those times because I always kept saying, I'm going to have the discussion with my girls. I'm going to take them out. And you know what? I never did. Um, so it, it could be as little as, uh, you know, having tea time with my four-year-old. You should have seen this amazing tiara I had on at 1030 a.m. before one of my virtual conferences. But I scheduled to rock that tiara at 1030 and I was rocking that tiara at 1030. So it really is about uh, scheduling your family and your personal time uh, first before you schedule everybody else. And many of you are going to say, I don't got to like that, Damon. I can't make up my hours like you because you happen to have life like that. No, get your ass up an hour earlier. Go to sleep an hour later. Cut out watching that TV show. Or cut out on Instagram. Trust me, you can find the time. Yeah, I, uh, uh, I, I'll I echo that to answer that question really quick. Um, I, I do the same thing and I schedule. Um, uh, and since having the baby, you know, I, I have to. So two nights a week, Monday through Friday, I'm home to put the baby to bed and I do not negotiate with Zena. Those are those two nights. If I got to work after she goes down, I work after, but I, I'm there for her then. And Saturdays are for the baby. I don't care what it is, um, unless it's a $100 million buyer and, and, and then I'll be back. But other than that, Saturdays are for the baby. All right, we are now going to invite one of the uh, question askers on the screen. Ooh. All right, Zoom, Zoom, the crowdcast at its finest. So it might take them just a second to load up, but while that's happening, I'm gonna throw another question at you guys. How did you uh, get through the fear of failure at the beginning of your career? Oof. Damon, you're, you're, you're more experienced than me. You go for it. I was vulnerable. I, I kept being vulnerable. I think that the biggest challenge a lot of people have is they don't ask for help or they don't they don't share where they're in trouble or and they're not vulnerable because they believe they're going to be laughed at. Well, if people are going to laugh at you, then you don't want those people around you. Um, so I got over the fear because as I would speak to people, I'd find out that they uh, themselves have the same fear. Or, and when I went up to people to ask them to be mentors and I told them where I'm having challenging times in my life and they would tell me that is not abnormal and that they had those times or they're currently going through those times. And I realized um, when you are vulnerable a little bit um, and a little paranoid, just like uh, Ryan shared with you, then you will get over the fear. Listen, everybody else is taken. I can only say who I am myself and um, be very transparent about it. And I found that once I was open about it, people love to help. So right now, if you are in fear, I got to tell you one thing. You got the universe on your side because everybody in the world is going through the same thing we're going through. So maybe last year, if you were afraid to be vulnerable to somebody because they were doing good or they thought they were going to laugh at you, you know right now where everybody else is. Everybody's at home uh, on their couch fighting over the remote control with their significant other, eating Cheetos and drinking Tito's and wondering how the hell they're going to get out of the house. And they all are scared for one reason or another, finance, health, family, anxiety. So you got it on your side. So make sure you do not walk into a room or a Zoom with this big shield on because be a little vulnerable and people will get behind you and that will take away you being afraid of a lot of things. Yeah. All right. We've got Jared Morris. who's got a question for you both. Hey, Jared. Hey, Ryan. Up, Jared? How are you? Hey, Damon. How's it going guys? Good. Hey, good. Hey, question for you, Ryan, you know, all of us, we ask, you know, uh, you know, you for a lot of advice and guidance on taking things to the next step and growing and evolving, but, I'm curious, who do you ask uh, for advice to continue your growth and, and involvement as well? Damon John. <laughs> uh, listen, I, I work really, really hard to surround myself by people way more successful than me. Um, and I, I ask all of them. I'm almost kind of like embarrassed a little bit, uh, but I always ask them questions. Um, uh, also my whole office here is like, Hey, you talk to us all the time. So yes, they help me <laughs> with advice. Good to have a support staff. Yeah. Yeah. Support staff. Yeah. They're all here. Um, uh, <laughs> but like, listen, I, I, some, some of my clients are, you know, the biggest private equity hedge fund tech Titans of the world. And when I get a split second with them, because I know that's impossible for most people, I ask them questions, you know, like, Hey, I'm a new CEO. Uh, what's your best advice? And then I'm going to write that offer for you. <laughs> like I, I try to squeeze in little things like, Hey, what, what, what's your morning routine? And then I'm going to tell you what the counter was. Uh, just because I, I, I have these people for such a limited time. Um, uh, and they do make me better, you know, and they, they're able to look at life in, in, in much, much, much different ways than I am. Um, uh, and listen, I wasn't joking. I mean, Damon is here. 
um, uh, not just because you know he's been a friend for a while, but uh, because he's somebody that I do really look up to, and I know that a lot of people look up to him as well. Um, uh, and it's just a really, really cool opportunity to have him here, so that we could all learn from him uh, too. You know, so be surrounded by people that are better than you. You know, that's the, the best answer that I can give. You surround Thank yourself you. with with the type of people that you are right now. You're just going to tread water for the rest of your life, right? Surround yourself with people that you want to be like, you know, who have things that you don't have. It's going to push you so much faster and harder. Great. Love it. All right, MedLife. Thanks for coming. That's all right. See you guys. <laughs> See you. Yeah. That's great advice, Ryan. You know, um, and I want to be very clear, you know, often if you want somebody who financially or success wise, but again, when I learned that that story from another person, he was just a great dad, you know, so ask yeah. the questions to people who you feel that you want to be in all aspects of life. It could be working out, right? It could be other, ask the questions, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we are bringing another person on screen, but I'll just um, while yeah, we wait for yeah. that. Yeah, I just want to people keep asking what I'm drinking. Um, this is this is not Clorox, okay? I'm not a lunatic. This is uh, Smirnoff, who's one of the sponsors of of many of the things we do. Uh, this is uh, a, a, a drink, a cocktail they made just for us tonight called uh, the Bold Buyer, and it is uh, Smirnoff mixed with. Curacao mixed with some other stuff. And you can see that what the mix is, if you go to uh, my Instagram, I made a little video for it. So that's what I'm drinking. Good, I didn't know that. Jeez, I, you had me say Tito's. I don't know Tito, fuck them. Let's, let's all about Smyrna. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. But but what, what rhymes with Smyrnoff? You said Tito's and Cheetos. I thought that was pretty great. Smyrnoff and Hermana. Herm 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 nah, there's nothing rhymes with Smyrna. Sort of. Maybe that's what yodels. it is. Yodels. Yodels. All right. Just Dude, it's been a long doing. time since I had a yodel. That was that was Ryan of, of yesteryear. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what I'm thinking about right now, obviously. So uh, so we have another question coming in. Uh, we do. They're still yeah. loading, but I can give you another question in the meantime. This is actually um, about working on, on television, and people are asking, um, what's what's your best tips for channeling confidence on camera besides filming yourself and re-watching yourself? What are the tricks that make you both feel – you're on TV so much natural and, and comfortable in front of the camera. Uh, I'll answer that. I, I went to I went to film school and I went to film school only for I went to film school to present as well as um, I went to film school because uh, in the early 2000s, late 90s, I used to place a lot of my product in the hip hop videos and I would never know what they were shooting. So I never understood what was happening. So if a director was like, you know, we're at this speed and, you know, I knew, I know now they'll shoot far, then they'll shoot medium and then they'll shoot, um, you know, uh, close up. And I now know a camera change would take a, you know, a certain amount of time. And I want to know that because I didn't want to be paying twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 to be in the video. I see the person over there and I realized that now they had a different lens and no matter what, we were never going to see that product. So it was wasting my time. But once I went to film school, I started to understand key lights and filter lights and continuity and motivation for the light um, and where to stand and position. And I didn't know that in eight or nine years from that point, somebody's going to call me to be on some stupid little show called Shark Tank that I never thought would work out. But because I was already somewhat in tune with what was going on during the pilot, I was able to position myself and understand what was going on. And that would change my life but not knowing again like why you're reading big money energy not know if i didn't educate myself in a certain area that i never know that i would have needed it i wouldn't have been prepared when that time came up so uh i think that hopefully that can answer um how i got into it yeah um i, I think I, I would echo that I, I didn't get to go i didn't go to film school um but i would say for me uh having confidence in front of the camera takes kind of what, what damon was just saying Right. It's 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 practice. Right. As much practice as possible. I know you said don't give that as an answer, uh, but it is practice filming yourself, looking at it, getting comfortable with what you look like, getting comfortable with what you sound like, realizing that your face kind of curves to the left, like whatever weird thing about you. Right. We all have weird stuff that are weird for us. Get used to it. Get over it. No one cares. Um, and just practice, practice, practice and then go hard. Right. Make sure you are prepared and you know what you're about to talk about like that. Even just in real estate with my first clients ever, 
um, uh, the best way that I was able to get rid of nervousness and to have that confidence and have that big money energy was over preparing, knowing exactly I would memorize information about buildings that I would never need to know ever, just in case I had to find something to talk about in a moment because there was silence. I would go into coffee shops and meet everybody in there just in case my client decided to take that street and got a little thirsty. I could walk in and say, Hey Bob, as if I've been there a thousand times, it would make me feel so much more confident and comfortable. Um, so do your preparation, know your moves, right? It's just like professional athletes. You know, they practice, 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 practice to be in the game only this much time. Um, uh, yeah, that's how we do it. You how know what, how you can start today? Go on and do your uh, Instagram live every day for a half an hour, a Facebook live every day for a half an hour. I literally challenge people to do that for 30 days. In the first couple of days, their hands are shaking. They are scared to death. But yeah. you now are talking to a, a, a people that already love and respect you, most likely, or or whatever the reason is. Do that for uh, a half an hour a day for 30 days and, or, or during the week. See how that works out for you. Good practice. Yeah. That's good. That's good tactical advice. So while we're waiting, um, it looks, seems like you've got some camera shy uh, fans here, but I'm going to go ahead and ask questions. We're rolling low on time. Anna asks, what do you do to stop and shift your mentality and energy when you're going into a bad situation with a client or a new business meeting, or just in general to keep your mentality in a positive place when dealing with difficult people? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take this for a second, if you don't mind. Um, Please. Uh, uh, that's a great question. And that's something that I call the red zone um, because I, I deal with it all the time. I was just, just before this, I've got a deal closing in Brooklyn, a townhouse. Um, I got buyers who are threatening to walk away and litigate um, and put the property and put a lien on it so that we can't close. I got sellers who are saying, screw you, do it. I dare you come after me. And I'm stuck in the middle trying to figure out how am I going to get this thing closed because it's a three and a half million dollar deal. And what everyone is arguing over is $7,000. Okay. So that's what happens when you get stuck in a really uncomfortable situation. There's high emotions and high stress. Uh, and it's something that we call here, we call it the red zone. And the way you get through it is you perform CPR, okay? Uh, it's in the book. C is you have to understand that there are some things that you cannot control, okay? There is control there, except that there are things that you cannot control and it's okay. I can't control that that buyer is a total lunatic. Can't, you control, can't control it, can't control it. I can though control how I'm going to talk to my seller because that's the line that I'm able to tick, right? P is perspective. A okay? perspective is learn to expect problems so that they don't derail you. So going into this specific situation on this specific deal, which I'm only bringing up because you just asked this question, um, uh, uh, you know, is having this perspective to know that, Hey, something might happen in this deal because I'm dealing with a very sensitive seller and a very, very sensitive buyer. So I know that I might be walking on eggshells here. So let me figure out going into it, how to set expectations so that I can manage all of the problems going into it, right? So there are things I can't control. I then have perspective and then R is re-engage. So it's taking action and getting back into the game um, uh, and consistently keeping the ball moving forward. So you don't throw in the towel. Let's get this to a close. You're staying positive. You're staying excited. I'm selling enthusiasm. Or we're getting this to a close. Anytime you have those tough situations, Breathe, practice CPR. Great, and just because we've got we've got um, one of the question askers on the screen, I'm going to bring him up real quick to ask what I think is going to be one of our final questions. Tom, hey, hey how Tom, are you? hey guys, how are you? What's up, Tom? How are you? <laughs> uh, so, I recently started a real estate team here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Um, a lot of the team members are really struggling. They got their license and then we got hit with the, with the pandemic. Yeah. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time, money and energy with them and, you know, financially it's taken a toll when I don't want to give up on them, but should I? <laughs> uh, what a way to ask that question. Um, Listen, my my gut instinct answer to that question, and maybe, maybe Damon, in terms of working with teams, might have a different answer, is is no, okay? Uh, if they're not going to give up on you, I don't think you give up on them. These aren't salaried employees, are they? They're just, they're, they're no. yeah, they're just team members. Um, remember, I, I would probably start and th stop and think about, hey, uh, why did you start a team in the first place? If it was just to make more money, then maybe that wasn't the right reason. 
right? You start a team so that you can leverage yourself so that you can do more business because you have too many incoming leads and you don't, you can't handle them all. You're trying to get into a luxury market. And so you need other people who are going to help you so that you can consistently promote your brand, promote your team so you can get more leads. Uh, if that's not the case, then maybe you just started a team too early, but I wouldn't give up on them. Um, uh, uh, I would probably double down on them. Hey, what can we do every single day? Don't worry about making money today. I know we all need to make money. Let's switch. Let's flip the script, right? That's something I do all the time. Let's flip the script. So instead of trying to close a deal today, let's go meet 15 people today. That's the game today. Let's go do it every day for the next four weeks. Give them tasks that are purely focused on generating leads and then see what business comes from that every day. Switch it up. But you got to be the team leader, though. Right. You can't just have people and say, all right, well, they're not doing a whole lot. So I don't know. Should I give up on them? Right? They're, they're looking at you. You're the boss, man. You're, you're the one who put it all together. So you got to lead them with direction so that they can follow their captain. But I would probably pull the put the stress off of deal making and put it on to lead generating. I don't know if David, you're about to have a, have a comment here. Uh, I, I, team building or not. I, totally agree with, I totally agree with you. They're not costing you any money. Yes, they're costing you time. But um, this is the time when people want to know that you are there for them. It's going to pay off in tenfolds when we get back. Um, be very transparent and honest why you are still there for them, that you want to lead them. But yeah, like like Ryan said, you know, are you talking to them about social media conversion? Are you, are you strengthening the team and being more prepared? Um, because as a leader, are uh, you supposed to do that also? Are you asking them what they have ideas on doing or what do you think they could bring to the table? A lot of times, you know, it is team members who bring in ideas that, you know, as we went through COVID, I said to my team, you know, what are you guys thinking about? They were like, you know, they gave me a lot of ideas. And I said, well, why didn't you tell me that before? And they said, I did, you moron. It was just six months ago when things were going great. You just didn't listen. <laughs> so uh, it's the team often that probably knows what should be done. Um, and maybe you didn't listen to them in the past, but that's how you get innovation. You allow people to uh, pitch in and, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, listen, at the end of the day, if you then have to let them go for various other reasons, at least, you know, you gave it a fighting effort. Yeah, no, that's good. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thanks man. Thanks that's for good. being here. All right, bars. Is it is it time to pick somebody to uh, to fly up here to New York? It's time to pick somebody. We've looked at. <laughs> There's been a ton of great responses. Lots of people had different things to say, but we have picked our our favorite response was from drum roll, drum roll, Tracy Ratzliff. Wait, 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 we can't hear, we can't hear. There's too much noise in my my secret. Who is it? Tracy Ratzliff from Kansas City. Kansas City. Tracy. So Tracy, we'll be following up with you via email to get your details, and you'll be flying you to New York. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and and I, I want to give I want to give away one more thing first before we all before we all go here and congrats Trace I can't wait to see you. Um, I am convinced that this book because all of us here and everything that I've gone through this past month, I think it's going to sell well. I think it's going to be great. Um, uh, I really want to get this off of my hands uh, because it's really driving me totally crazy. I want to I want to give this book away. Uh, the one that's been taped to my hand. So um, uh, I don't I don't know who wants it. But bars, was there your like your second favorite? Is there someone I, I could send this to? And whoever gets this, please put it in a plexiglass cube and save it for the rest of your life. Yes, we we went through the we went through the responses. There's somebody um, somebody who's watching it tonight who really uh, really wants something for her son. Right now. Some people, uh, you guys, I just want to understand all the people who are saying me me me, send it to me. You know this has got like what is what day is it today? The, the se- this is like 23 days of my hand sweat on this book. <laughs> Right. This is like this is like this is very much me inside this book here. I don't know why everyone got weird about that comment. <laughs> that weird. Well, one of one of the viewers has uh, needs some really special inspiration for her son who just finished school and he's uh, trying to get on the world. That's uh, Mindy Bubar. We're gonna send it to Mindy Bubar. Mindy. Mindy. Oh, wait, wait. Are we gonna do this? Go. Are you filming taking this off finally? Wait. Here we go. Here we go. It's gonna be the end. You have no idea. How excited I am to do this right now, Mindy! We're Mindy, wait! Right, I'm taking it off. I'm taking it off. There it is. Oh! Oh God! Oh God! So finally. Oh! Damon John, I, I, I know you regret being here, but um, uh, you are the best. No, I don't. You are really, really, 
your responses. You got a lot of people out here who love you and you're giving a lot of uh, value out there. I appreciate you being able to, uh, you having me on here with you and big money energy. I love it. Yes. Uh, and I and I just want to mention before the puppy takes over the show that we've got a big money energy playlist. We've got the recipe yeah. for the cocktail that Ryan was holding earlier. Everyone's going to get all of this via email after this is over. Yes. Everyone is awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for getting the book. Uh, keep buying it. Keep buying what? Ollie, say bye. And Ollie, this is Ollie the dog. Damon, you are the man. Thank you so much. I'm sorry to your four year old. I owe you. Everyone oh, congratulations. Great. Congratulations on everything, man. You always, you always, uh, you're the best, man. You guys are great. All right. We are out. Thank you guys for being here. Ollie, say goodbye. Say goodbye.